for your introduction. Uh, it's a very tough title, uh, actually. I, I gave the very general title, and uh, I have another one, which is uh, much more simple. It's how to manage organizational inclusion with new boundaries. And um, when I, I, I was invited by Eugenia, and, um, and I was just thinking about, I actually am coming from the management perspective and uh, speaking in front of people uh, with a, a huge topic as diversity in organizations, communities, and nations. Um, I should be humble and simple and try to um, actually to be very concrete on the project that we have and showing probably more uh, empirical material than, uh, than a big theoretical contribution. And basically what I would like to show is uh, uh, some uh, conclusions that we have um, on new challenges for inclusion and diversity management in companies after the, the COVID crisis. About me, uh, I've been introduced, but that's important that uh, first I'm coming from the field of cost cultural management and I have worked on expatriates and highly skilled migrants. Basically, uh, I'm not working very much on forced migrations and I worked on uh, on migrants that have very comfortable situations. And the second point is I work on diversity and or organizational inclusion, but from a management perspective, so basically how to develop tools and practices to improve your inclusion. Um, I am working on these projects with uh, two co-authors, Flavia Kanja, who is an anthropologist, and Xavier Salama, who is a, a management researcher working on expatriates and international mobility within companies. So basically, I'm, um, I've, I'm working at the moment on, on two projects. I'm, I'm going to explain them briefly. Um, important again, it's my perspective on inclusion and diversity. I come from HRM and um, we consider organization as a social community, uh, or organization um, as having a culture um, and with social norms, values and meanings. And this organizational culture is actually to observe in recruitment selection practices, uh, in integration practices in the workplace, in the way organizations manage skills and knowledge, performance and rewards, careers. And of course, uh, another topic for um, um, HRM is managing work conditions and work culture. And what we have experienced in the, in the COVID time is a huge change in work conditions not only in all organizations, but in most companies and, uh, and organizations who have the world, and with some new issues and new questions for work cultures. And of course, diversity is um, a transversal issue in all of these areas of HRM. Um, now that I have um, uh, clarified that, I don't want to speak much about our theoretical framework. I have uh, just the uh, the anxiety or I have the skepticism that it might be a bit too, um, too uh, specific. Uh, important is just to say we have two projects and uh, in one project, we, uh, we focus on a negotiation of space time boundaries and identity work. So, we believe that space and time are very important dimensions of organizational culture. And uh, uh, there, are, there have been some studies on the uh, homework boundaries uh, transformed uh, by or challenged by new technologies. And we, uh, we are focusing on the negotiation of, uh, of boundaries as a way of building identities uh, at home and at work. And uh, uh, the second project works on immobility. That's um, actually the tensions between mobility and immobility practices. And we use a paradox perspective by saying that 
you cannot observe mobility practices without considering immobility situations because the same actors might be mobile in specific situations and immobile in in others. Especially if you if you consider global managers this year, they have been from time to time globally mobile on specific assignments and mostly immobile in their kitchen or in their office. So that's just that. Our two research projects um, are actually one on the impacts of um, new virtual work practices and Swiss corporate policies for the future. It's, um, it's something like a Delphi study. It's a prospective study. We work it out in the three steps with, uh, with experts coming from uh, very diverse companies from Switzerland and uh, trade unions uh, uh, from the government, uh, researchers. And we worked on the, on the trends, what companies are going to do in the next steps to, to adapt their work practices uh, after the COVID period. Um, and the second project explore paradoxical tensions in uh, new work practices and immobilities, focusing on a special uh, population of IT specialists. We considered IT specialists as uh, a pioneer population for immobility and uh, new ways of, uh, of, of working and with uh, virtual work practices and not as a specific COVID uh, issue. So, and we are working in Switzerland. We have uh, three great pictures of Switzerland, uh, Zurich, uh, Geneva, or uh, Zurich, Vevey, and, and Basel, three big cities. But actually what we have seen from Switzerland during the interviews were more something like that. So like most of us, we have done a year uh, in front of a computer, uh, having Zoom interviews with most of our partners. And we are still, we are beginning at, at the moment to do real focus group dis discussions. Now I'm coming to our results. What I would like to present are four kinds of, uh, of results. I would like just to come to um, the uh, identification of new challenges for inclusion within companies and for diversity management by looking at four um, areas of issues, new virtual work practices, and uh, what is being negotiated in uh, in most of uh, the organizations uh, with representatives we interviewed, new work space time boundaries, uh, what is happening between uh, with the boundaries, with the negotiation of boundaries between home and work, and uh, what, uh, what is going to happen uh, or what is going to be prepared in, in companies. Two organizational boundaries, and especially um, uh, it's about uh, the relationship between organizations and marketplace and new transnational immobilities. Um, basically, the main message is to say inclusion today. What does it mean? when there is an organization that is no more a community. Uh, basically, you could include or try to include people uh, in organizations that used to be communities, that used to have a culture. But today, what we are seeing, what we are observing with virtual practices is we have more and more organizations without uh, a soul or without cultures, without clear values or clear um, frames of meanings. And uh, uh, the notion of inclusion is changing. And, um, and you can only include people today in a process uh, through a marketplace, uh, through um, uh, an, an organizational chart and through activities. And this is something that I'm going to show with uh, interview extracts from our interviews. First, um, new virtual work practices. I think we have all uh, experienced uh, virtual work practices and virtual work interactions this year. Whereas we observe in most of the companies are systematic use last year of new technologies in meetings, uh, in um, individual meetings, face-to-face -face discussions, and uh, 
training activities, what uh, most companies call town hall meetings uh, for the assembly of uh, em employees. Uh, people say, well, basically, we have the impression that we work more uh, because there is no more waiting time, there is no more informal time. Uh, we, we connect and we connect in, in two seconds. Huh? We don't have any more the smoke talk time. Um, and, and some people say we had the impression at the beginning to be more efficient or more effective, but we have the impression after a while to be actually a little less effective than before because, um, because there are a lot of activities and information channels and, uh, and a feeling and representations of the companies of the organizations that we do not get anymore. The second idea was that uh, uh, among our interviewees, HR managers who were, um, or, or, or managers of IT departments who were observing um, the, the, the practices, there is a perceived loss of, um, of human dimensions of interactions, uh, what they call, or what they, they define as uh, human dimensions of interactions is, uh, actually the, the quality or the quality, the emotional quality of interaction. Uh, some say the organization is now empty. It's uh, the quality of interaction that allows an entity to be a living animal that will go and evolve. Finally, meeting people is a part that allows you to bring thickness to the entity. Or uh, an, another one said, the cult uh, missing for me is the cultural dimension, the social leak, the atmosphere, spontaneity. I see people's faces, uh, or I used to see people's faces, and I knew exactly who is doing well and who is not. And today, with screens, I, I don't know. So basically, this is the experience that we, that we all made. And there is a perceived loss of uh, uh, the sense of interaction. Actually, at the moment, that's a bit the same situation that you probably know. So it's uh, speaking in front of, uh, of pictures that are not moving, that are not smiling, with, uh, with the impression that you are speaking uh, alone in your office with, uh, with, a, with a computer. Um, a third idea was um, Many uh, companies are trying to, um, to bring efforts or to work on uh, how to develop uh, organizational life and social interactions with coffee chats. Uh, some are planning attachment phases. So basically, some companies are trying to define very precise periods or moments where they do cultural work uh, or identity work or informal work, informal interaction work with the employees. We, when, we, when we discuss with the employees, uh, of course, in, in most of the, of the cases, first times are okay, but uh, uh, it's impressively efficient, but, uh, but most of the general meetings are also very cold. Um, Something that is very important actually for the inclusion issue is that there, there is in most of the companies a decline of collective meanings associated uh, with work and with the organization. There is the idea that virtually you have difficulties to create a social cohesion of a bigger organization, that you, are, you can bring people working together uh, with a process, with activities, with goals, uh, with um, objectives of productivity, but uh, you are creating a center, as this one said, uh, you are creating a center of robots that have lost their meanings. So basically you have uh, no community anymore and there is a lack of meaning or value given to activity uh, for, for the people who, who seem to be disconnected from the rest of the hive, as she said. So that's uh, new virtual work practices. There is, uh, yes, people have, or I could say we have domesticated uh, new uh, virtual tools, new ways of working um, with uh, uh, virtual work, but we are more and more disconnected from our organizations and organizations as work communities are more and more being dismantled. 
and basically they still have rational a rationale of activities and of objectives, but as human and social communities, they are declining. And inclusion is an issue that you have, uh, you can include people uh, in, a, in an organizational culture, but uh, including people on an organizational marketplace or in organizational processes is a very simple uh, rational uh, robot oriented practice. That's uh, the, the, um, the challenging or the um, provocative conclusion of this first point. The second uh, uh, area is about space-time boundaries. And this is something you know, these pictures of uh, the, the difficult boundaries of uh, being at home and at work. Um, some colleagues uh, describe that as an ontological limbo, that you are not really at home and you are not really at work. You are something in, a, in an area or in a space-time dimension in between. And uh, boundaries between private professional space and private professional time become more and more blurred. And, uh, this has a consequence for um, home and work identities. So people say, we know the kitchens of all our employees. Uh, we know their cats, we know their children. Uh, we, we, have, uh, we have people who love actually to have uh, different times and to put some private time uh, during the day and, uh, and, and discover a new e e elasticity. Uh, um, a new issue, actually an old one, but, uh, but with new clothes, is a strong diversity and inequality of uh, employees and workers in very different situations and, and, and resources. After the COVID period, uh, most of our HM managers said, uh, People, uh, there were people who really suffered. Uh, some in, well, I see people in front of a sea with, uh, with a great house and a great son, and I wanted to kill him. Uh, uh, they say people coming from higher hierarchical levels, they have a great remote work uh, practice and a great environment, but people, and especially um, older people, women, and uh, and women with kids with uh, uh, with traditionally uh, uh, gendered uh, households uh, experience more difficulties than than the others. Um, something that was uh, a, a bit new was <coughs> <coughs> the intervention of companies in private space and in private time. So you found more and more companies um, who, uh, who proposed office furniture for your home office uh, for special price, who proposed to check the ergonomics of your, uh, of your kitchen or to, uh, to help you to organize your home environment. So basically it's a clear, uh, nicely, uh, invitation to design your your private en en environment, and on the other side, there was many companies who were proposing um, uh, training and sessions how you can optimize your sleep, meditation, how you can optimize your food, uh, how you can optimize your private time management. So there is a clear um, blurred boundary between what is what used to be professional and what used to be to be private and uh, an intervention of companies in, uh, in, in matters that used to be uh, private ones. Uh, another topic uh, is how time is, uh, is going to be designed uh, after the COVID period. And most of the people say we are going to work. Most of the companies we, we had said, we are not going to abandon uh, remote work or home office. We are going, but it depends on the kind of job. It depends on the situations of people. And it's going to vary between 20% uh, and 60% of the job. So basically we know now that we need to have common time and common space together. 
And uh, most of the company are thinking about uh, which are the activities, individual and collective, that we have to plan collectively in a common space and in a common time, and which kind of activity are going to, uh, to be reserved for, um, for private space and or for home office or, or remote work. Uh, same idea or same uh, um, will to design or to redesign uh, workspace. Uh, we have many companies in Switzerland. We began to reflect on that before the COVID time, but uh, who are more and more active in uh, rethinking working working space um, in uh, in offices. Uh, reducing space because when people work at home you don't need so much uh, collective uh, office space in companies but they think and redesign collaboration zones even smaller companies some companies uh, think to organize hubs with uh, with different sites uh, inviting people to meet in sites that are practical for them during the week uh, and not necessarily uh, only the headquarters. Many companies want to offer co-working spaces with creative, uh, uh, with creative spaces. So basically it looks like, um, like a great new offer of space design. Um, first studies on companies who, who redesign their, their workspace um, are, are not so promising or are not so positive on the effects of redesigning um, uh, collaboration or uh, office spaces in, uh, in, in collective spaces. That's, uh, that was the second dimension of our, of our results. Um, new workspace time boundaries. So there are negotiations on boundaries that are linked to identities, um, work and home Id identities um, with new negotiations and, uh, on collective space and, and private space, private time and collective time. Um, the, the third dimension of our results is about um, uh, new organization boundaries. Uh, something that was uh, interesting for us is that organizations uh, are more and more designed like marketplaces. It's probably the influence of uh, gig economy. But of course, when you work virtually, you manage more uh, by deliverable objectives and less by control of work behaviors. Before you control people with the presence, you control people with their, uh, with a smile, with their behaviors, uh, with uh, um, informal contributions. And today you evaluate people with a performance at the end of the week, uh, with uh, what they deliver and uh, the assessment of the quality of the employee is now really based on the coverage of the objectives and, uh, and not anymore on the uh, on work time that they have uh, uh, been present uh, in the office. So this uh, thought was actually interesting for us because um, it's the idea inside and outside the organizations might be challenged the boundaries between inside and outside because virtual employees are more and more managed like uh, freelance em employees uh, working with, uh, with a culture of deliverables. That's actually the same. This uh, new management culture has been taught and trained by uh, young managers, uh, not only uh, actually training them in virtual tools, but also training them in how to manage their teams with uh, objectives, how informal they should be and uh, uh, what they should monitor. So basically there is a, a, a new organizational culture. Um, they mentioned that they have, of course, an issue in, uh, in new virtual organizations is the integration of newcomers. So basically inclusion of, uh, 
of new employees and uh, and most of the companies are thinking about how to explain what the organizational culture is especially when the organizational culture is being redesigned and reconfigured um, and some of them uh, actually address difficulties but say okay we are waiting for the end of uh, of a covid period we try but we know that it's uh, that it's difficult so mention especially um, a difficulty for for junior employees uh, looking for um, looking for senior employees training them coaching them uh, while senior employees, or most of them, especially the one with a, with the most solid experience, uh, are actually uh, at home and try to avoid any contacts with any people who could steal that time. So basically, you have a conflict in, in, in many companies for people who are demanding for tutors and potential tutors that are actually uh, being at, at, at home and use or might use the COVID as a way to escape from um, building relationships with the young generations. Um, something else uh, in the new organization boundaries, um, it the um, it, the, the, the management of teams and or of team culture and the management of organizational culture. So what we what we observed in, in many companies is that proximity management managers they they um, they have faced the challenge of bringing relationship belongingness uh, social or informal social interaction within teams. So at the team level, it still works. Uh, but at the organizational level, this uh, feeling of belongingness, this feeling uh, or this bonding uh, with the organization, the social cohesion with the organization is now challenged with uh, a team social cohesion. The organizational culture is much more uh, uh, a, a micro team culture or a set of micro team cultures and the social cohesion of the whole organizational cultures uh, is really challenged and is probably uh, disappearing in the, in, in the virtual contacts and, and interactions. That's new organizational boundaries. On one side, is, um, the, there is a new boundary negotiated with the marketplace. Uh, we, we have to say there are more and more people who say, actually, um, we can take talent or, uh, or competencies or skills coming from the marketplace, coming from outside the organization, because virtually it's possible and it does not change much than having employees inside the organization uh, with with work contracts so uh, new organizational boundaries is uh, a new negotiation of boundaries between organizations and markets and inside there is a negotiation between um, team cultures and organizational cultures so there is a, a, a potential conflict and, and rivalry between belongingness to teams people you know, people you see every week, and belongingness to an organization that you don't have a real common space or common time with them. And, uh, and you have only uh, rational, uh, rational objectives uh, that uh, doesn't help you to, uh, to feel in included. The last topic, is about transnational mobilities. And um, we, we were concerned because um, we have a very strong uh, migration and a very strong highly skilled migration in Switzerland. And we asked, we have done before um, a few research projects on uh, multinational companies and expatriates. And we were wondering what is going to happen with uh, new virtual work practices and international mo mo mobility. And uh, what we had was, uh, or what we observed was um, um, 
we had uh, sorry uh, more demands from um, from migrants or from foreign employees during the COVID phase um, to work in their home country and uh, to to have um, uh, to be allowed to do remote work or home office work uh, from their home country and. Uh, during the COVID period, this was uh, mostly allowed in, in most companies for a few more weeks or for two months. Uh, uh, but uh, it's now discussed: is this the practice that we're going to um, that we're going to expand in the future? Uh, and this is a real discussion. And virtually, it makes possible to work throughout the borders. Uh, um, but the question is how to integrate or to include people in uh, in work teams and work organizations when they when they work uh, 500 uh, kilometers away. But uh, it seems to be possible now. But uh, people are still uh, working on it. The the second point was. Um, uh, they still say it's possible actually when the people know the job, know the culture, know the organizations, but they refer to a culture that used to exist and to, to a situation that used to exist. And they say, okay, we have, uh, we have known um, integration and inclusion difficulties with, with people coming from, uh, from other cultures, working virtually or not. Uh, it's, still, uh, it's, it's still a set of, uh, of difficulties. Uh, multinational companies have reduced their expatriation programs. They, they say actually uh, working virtually uh, allows to focus on the integration in inclusion of employees in the work processes and, uh, and in the work organization. We used to have difficulties and problems with uh, non-work world and with the non-work spheres and with the families uh, and with the uh, adjustment of cross-cultural adjustment of families in uh, in host countries uh, now with uh, virtual solutions and short-term assignments we have a solution uh, to exclude the family from the inclusion and from the integration and that's uh, that's uh, uh, a new situation that is uh, expanding um, of course, uh, there are some uh, legal and tax limits, uh, and uh, at, at the moment, the COVID period was an exception, and uh, uh, it's not very clear uh, how such solutions are going to be possible in the future. Um, and uh, maybe the, the last uh, set of issues or observations with transnational uh, mobilities brings the ideas virtuality might bring a social space, a, a social space, sorry, without any national borders. Uh, what we see is that national borders, they still come back with, uh, with cross-cultural difficulties. Um, and they, um, uh, the abolition of, uh, of cross-national borders in multinational work seem to be possible when people have been socialized um, in the organizational culture before. And now I'm just concluding with, um, uh, with the challenges, just to sum up the challenges that we have observed and identified in our, in, in our two projects. What we observe is um, we have new forms of diversity since the COVID period, and some of the new forms have been combined with all forms of diversity of or inequality, or old uh, old uh, target groups uh, for this discrimination. Um, we observe. Um, a strong diversity of mobility practices. It depends on your resources. It depends uh, on your country and uh, on uh, on the kind of uh, priority your job has. 
a diversity of technology users uh, for skills and material, a diversity of, uh, of private environment, and of course, the possibility of people to, uh, to negotiate uh, positive uh, private professional boundaries. And uh, what was um, probably the most or the newest point, that's a diversity of belongingness cycles within organizations. We, we found out this new conflict between team identities and corporate identities. So basically, uh, cultural inclusion still works with, uh, within teams and, uh, and, and works less within companies. And uh, four new challenges for inclusion. Um, there is an increase of inequalities and, uh, and for, for the most vulnerable groups. There is a decline of uh, highly skilled family migration and long-term mobility. It's probably a term, a, a trend that was already there before the COVID and that has been accelerated uh, in, the, in the COVID period. The third one is um, the, there's going to be inclusion in organization with identity work, with, uh, with, uh, with people who are um, able to negotiate um, time, space, boundaries between their home and work worlds. And I think it's a, it's a huge challenge for, for most of us. Uh, and the last one, it's, uh, it's probably the most interesting one is, uh, can we still speak about inclusion in organization or in organizational cultures when basically the virtual tools help companies to, to rationalize work processes and to consider organizations more and more like a, a process with activities and skills with less and less persons to integrate or to include, where uh, the model of our organizations is more and more um, a marketplace and, and a network. And when organizations and virtual organizations, even if they do not want Two, uh, are observing um, a decline of communities and identities at work. And that's, uh, that's my conclusion. So thank you.